Ladies and gentlemen, this is the second last day of Lead Code 30 day challenge. I'm very close to finishing this. Problem for today is binary tree maximum path sum. I don't have a timer today. I will just do, I will just calmly explain what should be done. Given a binary tree, find the maximum path sum. For example, in this tree, binary tree means every vertex has at most two children. Uh, this is optimal path here, 1527. Always in such a tree, this path will go up for some time and then down. Maybe one part will be empty, so like never go down, so just vertical path. But for trees, almost always, you should ask your children to return something to you, so you would use it. For example, let's just start with height of a tree. So what is the maximum distance from you to a leaf? It would be something like this, return max of left, uh, let's say left dot um, function. Let's say that I am asked to find the height of a tree. I will return one plus max of left dot um, function. Uh, and what? Oh no, function of left, comma function of right. And that would be it, plus you need an if for null, if null returns zero. If your left child says, I am at sub three with height of five, and then right has height of three, then you know, oh, five is bigger, so I have total height six. Here we have something more complicated, because uh, we this would find, if we also counted values, this way we could count maximum vertical path, so vertical path with maximum sum of elements. But I'm okay with taking some path from left child and path from right child. It will turn out that I need a, a pair of values. Um, let's call this dp because really oh, dfs, dfs will be a nice name. Tree node root. If it's a null then return zero zero. And before I move to, to, to what happens exactly here, let's see a drawing. We have our root here with left and right children, and we don't really have to know how exactly those look like. We just want to say, I will run DFS for left child and right child. They will give me some value. I need to use that to compute the total answer. The hardest case, of course, is to combine some path like that with the right path then my left child, I need to ask him about the maximum possible value of such a path. Same with right. And if I get those two values, let's say this is x, this is y, then I know a possible total value of a path is x plus y plus myself. x plus y plus my value, value at root value. And is that everything? If y can be treated as zero for empty path, then it will also consider such a vertical path, not going to the right part. So is that it? Also, when you think about this, you should consider this vertex to not to possibly not be a root. Maybe we just run DFS on this because there is some bigger root above, and it also has some children here. Maybe it has even next parent and so on. But uh, in order to compute the answer for that guy, we also need to treat this as a subtree. So when you are here, you also need to return something when you are in this vertex, and that is that maximum path starting here and going down. So that your parent could also use this formula. Now once we have this mm, understanding, let's get back to code. I think I will get back to just returning int, and the value returned by this DFS will be max path going down. And uh, I might want to say that I'm interested in DFS of left, root.left. Let's create a variable for that. X is this, just like the one I marked on the drawing. Y is root.right answer can be x plus y plus my value. I will keep some global answer. I will consider this answer to be the sum. 
like that. And what do I return? I return the best path starting from me and going down. My value plus max of x and y. If this then returns 0. So this means for a leaf, I consider this path to be 0. Can a path be empty? The path must contain at least one node, and values can be negative. So it would be incorrect to consider answer to be 0. Let's make sure that I'm correct about that. Here I will run DFS of root, and let's say for convenience, there is some answer here. Answer is initially minus infinity, minimum possible value of int, and to return it at the end. Is that everything? What for a leaf, 0 will be returned. If, I mean, not for leaf, for null. If root is a single vertex without any children, what will happen? x will be 0, y will be 0, because those two are nulls, so zeros will be returned. The answer is considered to be 0 plus 0 plus my value, and then I return that maximum path starting from here and going down. Sounds fine to me. Let's run for the sample test, and then if it passes, submit the full thing. Uh, root dot left. Oh, this is a pointer, not an object. So we need to use arrows. And the value doesn't exist. It's val. I don't think that val is much better name. If you create a struct, it's not that you save a lot of time. Uh, val in some other place as well. Sometimes there is a hack. If your code is very long, but you didn't use a correct name, you can say define value val, and then it kind of replaces it everywhere. But I don't recommend it. Defines are very bad. Somebody can look at part of your code and not understand it. 2 minus 1, ex out 1 expected 2. Minus 1, expected 2. Because... I should maximize that with zero. I think I remember about that before. So when I am negative, like neg negative, like minus one, and I return some value to my parent, and my parent now will consider me, if I am minus one, then my parent prefers an empty path, a zero. Hence, let's change it like that. In a moment, I will draw this example to show you what happened, why this is needed. Six, six, submit. Accepted. Let's get back to a drawing for a moment. I failed a test with a root being value 2 and one child minus 1. This child, it gives me, it returns the best path starting from here and going down, possibly doing zero steps. And this x returned value x is equal minus 1. Right child doesn't exist, so y is equal 0. And then I considered answer to be 2, like x plus 1 plus value, this thing. So minus 1. Oh, this thing, minus 1, plus 0, plus 2, the value here. So the answer was 1. But instead, I want to say, I don't really need to go down from this vertex and take something from left child. I cannot take it as well. This formula should say, what is the best path that includes this element and possibly goes down, maybe to both sides. But I don't, I'm not forced to take some element from the left and from the right. Hence, I should maximize this return value x with 0. Instead of this, zero. And now it works. I think that's it. Uh, you should remember that problems with trees and possibly finding some good path or pair of vertices, something like that, height of a tree even, size of a subtree, they often are about just thinking what a function should return. Like here the function that didn't really return the biggest path. It found the biggest path from this vertex down and I showed you how I got to this observation that when I'm in some vertex and I want to combine some good path from the left to the right uh, and to the right, I should just find the best such two vertical paths and then combine them here in the root. I hope you enjoyed this video. See you tomorrow in the last day of 30-day LeetCode challenge. Bye.